So we just got through discussing for the last 30 so minutes on what the Holy Spirit's been speaking into us. And the common theme is that, that it's about fellowship, what it looks like, what it feels like with our Heavenly Father and with our earthly Father. And they're closely connected. And I, I want Donald and Dwight to just share some of the things that God's put on their heart about it. Um, that it, as a quick summary for you, for those who weren't able to attend today. Donald, you were sharing about um, how you feel that the movement of the Lord in our nation and in our lives is a call to intimacy, to a relationship where it's not, um, where God isn't so distant, where God isn't so far, but yet he is close and intimate so, so intimate that you can call him your daddy that's the call that you're feeling that call god's leading this nation leading people to a closer relationship with him any any thoughts that you want to add to that uh, i'm still um I'm still emotionally um, shaken by what Brother Dwight just shared. Brother Dwight, go ahead and share about the reverence of God choosing our our prince. What was that? What was that you said, Brother? I said, yeah. Hmm. We, uh, when we start finding fault with our parents, or you know, looking at at you know their shortcomings and criticizing them we really you know really criticizing god because god's the one that chose to bless them with us and us with them and when we find fault with them you know we're really finding fault with god saying well why did you give me these parents you know well god gave them to you because they were who mm. you needed. Yeah, it's who you so, needed. I mean, I mean I, and and I know there are abusive parents there, but there's something in them that still they they still love you. They, I'm finding out, and just in in my relationship that I can't love anybody any more than what the love that I've received from God for myself. If I don't, mm. the more I understand God's love for me and everybody around me, the more I can really portray what love is to other people. And so really what I looked at with my parents, because I never had any doubt whether they loved me or not, or whether they were for me or not. But, you know, I they they had some shortcomings, but they did the best they knew how. And you know, see that from what I just said. They could only love with the love that they'd received from God. And a lot of mm. us have never really been able to receive or know the true love of God. You know, we've always, you know, oh, God loves me if I do, if I'll do this, or God loves me if I do that, or I don't do that. But God loves me no matter what. It's like Brother Don says that, you know, God loves me just the way I am, but he loves me too much to let me stay there. Mm. And I'll preach to you if you aren't careful. Okay, no, come on, brother. That's, uh, you, you're, touching, you're touching my heart. You're revealing what's inside of you. It just, it just brings to mind that 
my dad was a big promoter, you know, do as I say, don't do as I do. You know, and I'd see the hypocrisy in that he would tell me how to live my life, but he wasn't living his life based on what he said I should live my life based on what he was saying. And when I get to the, the point in, in the Holy Spirit's bringing me is that um, I have not had an earthly father but the daddy I have is the creator of the universe. Yeah. And um, and that my earthly father was just a man. To your point, yeah. doing the best he knew to do with what he had to work with and while he was available and open to be. And, um, you know, he said, you know, I... I put a roof over your head and I put food on the table and clothes in your back. Uh, I don't need to do any more than that. That's my that's my responsibility to do that. And um, it kind of brings to mind. He said, you know, if, if earthly man, if your child asks for Red, would you give him a stone? If he asked for a fish, would you give him a serpent? How much more would our Heavenly Father do for us as his children? And um, it all goes back to um, trust. You know, there's, there's a little song I remember as a child is trust and obey because there's no other way to be happy in Jesus, but to trust and obey. And that's so beautiful and so simple, but it's so challenging in so many different ways, is to trust and obey. And um, thank you, for, Dwight, for sharing that. That just, um, it really touched my heart, bro. Yeah, it was, that was beautiful, man. That, you know, it's realizing that our fathers are just, managers that god has chosen to um to steward us as we're growing up and then and, and growing along with our fathers and and it's so um it's challenging at times because you know we don't want to trust and we don't want to obey uh, we you know it's just that rebellious streak within all of us that um we know the good we ought to do, but we don't feel like doing it in that moment. And then when our fathers call us out on it, it, it there is an irritation. Um, but yet at the same time, you know, it's, um, we, we talked, Donald brought this up that, you know, sometimes we get upset with our family members for being so raw and unfiltered. And which comes across as is disrespectful, or, or um, you know, we get to see a side that most people don't get to see because they let their guard down. And instead of being upset at the fact that 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 they let their guard down, but to actually reprogram in our mind that is them showing. Uh, uh, even the greatest of honor of all, you get to see the inside of who they are. Because so many times the stranger in the room only gets to see the side that they know that they should show to people. But the side that they don't want to show to people, uh, they show to us. And um, in the fact that we still love them after they show it, 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 it it's a deeper connection. And uh, But uh, I also brought up the fact that it's a, it's a it's okay to express how you feel but back it up with what is real based on the character of the person that you love you know dad i, I feel like you're blah 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 <laughs> but here's what i know is real that i know you're for me you're not against me I, I know that the fullness of your favor and forgiveness rest upon me i know that i can trust that you are doing what you believe is best for me and i may not always agree with it but I know that that you are for me, and, and that I, and I love you for that. 
um, you know, it's okay to express how you feel, but back it up with the, the part that is real based on the character of who that relationship is. Because if you don't, if you just tell them how you feel, um, it, it can destroy relationships. You know, it's, it's important to, to have both sides of it. You know, the, the honesty and the rawness of what you feel is, you know, if not backed up by what is real, can really be dishonoring and destroy relationships. So, um, so, and we do the, we need to do the same thing with God because God, the funny thing is that what we do as humans, we, we think, I'm not going to tell God about that because he already knows that I did that. And, and so there's no reason confessing that or, and really the confessing isn't for your relationship with God. It's for your relationship with yourself. It's the getting real with yourself and not pretending that you're something that you're not, but saying, this is what I know that I did was wrong. And, and this is, you know, and being honest and open with it and saying, Lord, I need your power, your strength to, to not do that again. So, um, so my notes of other things that we talked about, we talked about fallen angels, angels means messengers and, and fallen angels reproduce by like viruses. They like to spread messages inside of us. They implant messages inside of us to distort. And uh, Donald, you brought up the fact that the strongest um, thing out there in existence is love because God is love. Uh, but the second is connection. And, and I would add on to it that, that connection is the bond of love. You know, that, you know, communication is the connection that bonds us together. You know, if, if we're out of communicate, if we're not communicating, then and we're not connected, then everything breaks down. Everything breaks down when, when communication breaks down. So I, I thought no. so, um, so poignant and then um and dwight you brought up in in all cases your whether it's relationship with your heavenly father or your relationship with your dad is this attitude that this person is for you not against you and that the fullness of their favor and forgiveness rests upon you that that has got to be in the relationship or that you will not have a relationship at all so that is the foundation of every great strong relationship as soon as you start thinking the person's not for you and that they're against you, everything else starts breaking down. Uh, and mm -hmm. so it doesn't matter how true that statement is. It is not the way and it doesn't lead to life. Mm -hmm. You know, uh, while you were talking, you, you know, you know, our family members and people that we're close to that we have relationships with and, have confidence in how they you know feel about us and care for us and we think that they sometimes think that they have that same confidence and same you know assurance of our love for them and so you know we express things that might seem unloving to them and and they're not really confident that we're for them and not against them it can cause them to to reject us or have problems yeah, yeah that's, you know that's... you were talking about it it just kind of remind me that you know christ um chose the disciples and they chose to follow him out of obedience and then it turned into love relationship and he got frustrated you know and he kept saying oh you little faith you know and then he said I'm not going to be here with you much longer you know when are you guys going to get this you know i it's time for me to go back home with the father and, and you guys are just stumbling over things when you should be moving on. And, uh, and you know, he, he called them out um, and, you know, and loved the way that he 
loved and respected them that he was so concerned about what was going to happen with them in their lives after he was gone and sent the Holy Spirit to guide and direct them when he wasn't here in, on earth. And, um, um, you know, it's, and I, <laughs> I, I know I find sometimes in myself, it's like, um, come on, you, you've been there before. You don't go back and visit that again. You know, uh, it's, it's time for you to put those childish things away and start acting as the man that God wants you to be. And it's only through his love and guidance to the Holy Spirit and support and encouragement like you brothers have in my life to give me guidance to to tra traverse this this life that we have here now with all the challenges and chaos and finding the peace within that doesn't come from the out, it comes from within. Yeah, when when people hear that, they think, oh, I just need to trust more. I need to believe more. I got to, I got to, and, and they're somewhat correct in that, but you know, faith is listening, trusting, and putting in practice or putting in place what God has said and revealed to you. And it it's so he's saying, oh, you of little listening, trusting, and putting in place what I've already told you we're gonna do. I said we're gonna go to the other side. We're gonna get there safely. Uh, and even though we're in the middle of a hurricane, we're going to make it to the other side. You just got to trust, listen, and put in practice what I said. Just keep on doing what you need to do to get to the other side instead of worrying and being upset about it uh, and waking me up from my deep sleep. Um, you just put in practice and enjoy this this hurricane that you're going through. It's It's a roller coaster. Instead of getting worried about it, you know, you go pay good money to go to 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 experience the same feelings that you feel in it in a roller coaster ride. That do it. Enjoy the hurricane. Enjoy the the rumble. Enjoy the ups and downs. Instead of because if I said it, you're going to make it to the other side, that's why you're able to enjoy a, a roller coaster ride because you believe and trust in the structure and integrity that that you're not going to fall out of the thing you know, that you're not going to die. And, um, and yet you get this thrill of, you know, I feel like I could fall out of this thing, you know, and, and, uh, you know, that's how you can, as a Christian, live a life filled with joy. If you know that you're going exactly where God has called you to go and, and, and whatever the challenge it is that you're facing, you know, that if you know, you're going to make it to the other side, because your heavenly father said, you're going to make it to the other side then enjoy the ride, you know, and um, so lots of good stuff here, you guys, and uh, you I know, always... also, brother, brother Dust, you know, when you were talking, we know that eventually the roller coaster ride is going to end. Okay, we know there's an end that's going to happen at the end of the roller coaster ride. You know, sometimes when I find myself in a situation, and you think, um, is this ever going to end? You know, and a lot of times it doesn't end until I stop the ride. You know, yeah. I'm to brace it and enjoy it while it happened. But, you know, you, you think um, there was a song um, back in the 50s and you know, why does the world keep on turning? And after a broken relationship, you know, the next day, but there is the next day that we have to start fresh and anew that uh, Christ has provided for us. And there's so many people that are living in the past and they're still on that ride and they chose not to get off of it. And it's... Um, I don't want to go with that, but that's yeah. And and you know what the Holy Spirit's saying to me about that, Donald? There are men that you know and that I know 
and their that their earthly father has been dead for many many years and yeah. yet they're still on that roller coaster of the hurt and pain that their earthly father caused to them yeah. and and they're still yeah. feeling those emotional pains and and the roller coaster yeah. has stopped yes yes you know yes yes amen and, and you know but it's some of the emotional pains that that father had caused created vows inside of that own that same individual that helped some of it helped shape them to be the father that they were you know there 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 are fathers that were uh, i know of that that were all about you know son you're going to do what i want to do what i enjoy doing and and totally neglected what what their son wanted to do and then the the um their son grew up to be just the opposite where you know whatever the uh their child wanted to do then that you know that's what the father did you know so the child wanted to go uh, uh just make up something like surfing and the guy like for example like me with, with anna uh she loves surfing i grew up watching the movie jaws as, as a young child so when i get in the water i'm always like is there a shark out here? Is there a shark out here? It makes it very difficult to enjoy the water because of that roller coaster that um, I experienced uh, watching the movie Jaws at a very young and impressionable age. <laughs> so, uh, you know, so with the, I, I think the general theme we're also seeing is that we got to trust listen put in practice what god has said if he says you're you can go in that water you're not going to be eaten by a shark uh, then go in the water and and not be eaten by a shark so enjoy that time with your family so i'm going to stop the recording and um but i think this is a really good summary of what we talked about and i really appreciate you guys sharing i'm going to stop for right now